the streets. The streets are terrible. <laughs> That's right. I'm back in my sanctuary of comics now, and I'm surrounded by good things. Good things to share with you. Like, uh, Casey, what do we got here? Well, first off, Morgan's gonna teach you how to score cocaine on the street when you're broke. Not as difficult as you expect. No. Um, starting off this week, we will go with a book both Morgan and I are excited about. Finally, it's out. It's a little it's late. Cool. It's, cool. it's a little late. Um, Dia de los Muertos by Riley Rosmo and others. And this others. Is Riley Rosmo's almost one man anthology. Um, stories about ghosts. Dead people, dead people, zombies. And in this one, some serious attempt at curbage. Yeah, blatant, shameless. Blatant, shameless. It's got a, the, uh, the skeleton Mount Rushmore there is pretty great. It is pretty cool. Honestly. That is cour courtesy of Joe Keating. Um, otherwise, there is Alexander Gressian and Curtis J. Weib, who Rossmo works with as well. This is the last issue, oversized. It smells really good. It's This is a good smelling one, for sure. Uh, but yeah. Very cool stuff from Riley Rosmo. Also, this week, we've got the trade paperback collection of Punisher Warzone, which is, of course, Rucka's finale for his Punisher run, drawn by Carmine D. Gian Domenico. Awesome. Yeah, Punisher versus the Avengers, and, you know, it kind of plays out how you expect it. It's, I'm not going to say much more than that, but... It's good. The, it's Avengers, good. The, the, the fight with Thor, the fight with Thor really <laughs> is pretty amazing. It's not stuff to be missed no. there. No, but yeah, the art in that is, is fantastic. It's really, really good. If you're looking for something that is sure to offend almost everyone, we have Tales of Buddha before he was enlightened. The first page, the Buddha is smoking a giant joint, very large. But then again, it comes from the ground, you know, I mean, maybe the Buddha's okay with that. Um, but not only is there Buddha, but there's Jesus too. They team up, they have adventures. I don't really need to tell you how offensive this can get. Yeah, there's some, uh, some wow. dwarves and fish suits. There's some dwarves and fish suits, knives, people being killed, Buddha play- oh. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. offensive. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely good. Very offensive. <laughs> and from Vertigo this week. An actual the wave. New Vertigo. Number one. Yeah, it's sure not an ongoing. Ten issues. This is the first of ten by Scott Snyder and Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy, who just finished up Punk Rock Jesus. And we Amazing. all love Punk Rock Jesus, didn't Amazing. we? This is, uh, it's got colors by Matt Hollingsworth, though, which is cool, because I mean, as, gonna... as, as much as black and white yeah. Sean Murphy is yeah. awesome yeah. and everything, the colors really, really work well here. It, it's got a great John Carpenter feel to it, shades of the thing, Totally, you know. totally. It feels very, like, you can almost hear the synth, you know, John Carpenter's synth music coming up. Yeah, Maybe that's something, just me. I don't know, it, it's probably just you, honestly. Uh, but there's something spooky going on down in the depths of the ocean there. Sci -fi and, of horror. course, there is a science team trapped in a submarine at the bottom of the sea to figure out what exactly it is. Of course. Yeah. You can see where this is going. <laughs> brought to you by the man who brought you the Court of Owls. And American Vampire. And American Vampire. Can't, can't just sell that Court of Owls stuff on him. Well, I mean, that's what he's paying his rent on. So, you know, whatever. From Marvel this week, a book that I have talked much crap about. <laughs> I'm totally going to go back on my word about this book. Mainly because of my love for Psylocke. It's bordering on obsession. It's creepy. But there's Spiral, there's the Phantom X's, and then there's Puck. Why? Because Puck is awesome, duh. And he comes up to like the crotch on all the women. Like that just must be his, like, I don't understand it, but that's, that's just like this high as up he goes. Um, but yeah, normally Ron garney has been on this book, uh, but Adriana Alfano, I think, Alfano? Adrian Alfano. Uh, Adrian Alfano, and unfortunately Dexter Stoy does some pages. It's, it's not, I mean, his stuff on his first few issues of Captain Marvel was a little bit painful to read, yeah. but he's definitely, definitely cleared it up a bit for this. But this all takes place in, like, crazy, almost Japanese folktale feeling, psychic limbo thing? It's inside of Bishop's brain. Yeah, which has clearly gotten messed up since yeah. he got thrown to the end of the future. Like, he's growling in other issues, and I was like, when the hell does Bishop, he's standing in an alley, he's like, Arr! and this giant, like, bear thing comes up. I'm like, what the hell is going on in this comic? I have no idea. It's brought to you by Sam Humphreys, the man who did uh, Fanboys vs. Zombies, which 
I'm still kind of amazed got published. I, is I, still being published. Still being published. Like, I feel it's, like I feel like I could draw that call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, better stuff here. Very trippy, weird, bear, red antelope action with Bishop in. Yeah, he's getting in touch with his spirit animals. Totally, it's, totally. Don't knock him. No, it's the you know the techno virus. It, it affects everyone. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and that's not enough Psylocke for you this week. Got X Men number one here from Brian Wood. And what's that other guy? Oliver Koipel? Yeah, as the man. Stuart Eminem, but no. that's the other, other X-Men book here. Seriously, Koipel <sighs> is probably the premier Marvel superhero artist. Yeah, I'd say him and, him and Jim Chong. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, they got very similar style. Jim Chong, him, they got that really clean, fat, kind of superhero thick people. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of Japanese influence in it, too. Very much so, some Shiro. For sure, but I mean, this is like... It's Brian Wood's X-Men, and as much as Brian Wood, he his stuff is hit or miss. Like, yeah. he writes really, really phenomenal creator-owned stuff, yeah. and then yeah. he does slightly less good like, superhero stuff Ultimate sometimes. Ultimate X-Men, you know. But his last X-Men run on, you know, the last volume of the adjectiveless <laughs> X-Men book, <laughs> right. he started over here because it's now. It's Marvel <laughs> Now! <laughs> it was pretty good stuff, though, and... Used, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of the same, like, Psylocke was in it, he had Storm as the leader of the team, he was obviously setting up this run here. Yeah. Uh, but this is his all-ladies X-Men team, it's got Jubilee, she's hanging out with the baby, she's oh, she still... She looks so cool is she still on a vampire? No, she's tell. not a vampire anymore, she, she has a baby. I don't think it's her baby. Are you sure? She's carrying around that baby like it's her, but uh, she does look like unhappy. Like yeah. But you know what, isn't she still, like, 16? Hey, did they ever it's like comic book time. It's comic book time. I don't don't know. talk about it. But she looks badass on the top of that on the top of that sensor. All She's of got these the women. track jacket and the yellow ranger. And the piece ranger. And with the, with the you know it's total yeah. Buy this book. I don't. I, I I do not. We do not really pimp X Men books. Buy this comic. It's really good. Not new ones at least. Not new ones at least, right? <laughs> That's as close to the '90s X Men vibe as you're gonna feel. Um. So, are you ready to blow past the 90s past in its 90s. sheer awesomeness of its I vision of the future? I can't. I can't. First, we brought you Doom 2099 by respected writer Warren Ellis. Now we bring you Spider-Man 2099 by... Peter well, David? Peter David is a very respected writer, but you kind of know what He's you're He's a getting. workhorse. He's a workhorse. Peter David's been doing He's comics for... Part of the old guard at this point. For real. You know, uh, he's been doing X Factor for forever. Um, but this was one of my favorites as a kid. I was a big Spider Man fan, 2099 hit. I bought all the books. And lo and behold, but, you know, Spider Man, you thought, you know, his origin, it was this kid. You know, he goes and he's like, oh, I just want to see a science experiment gets bit by a radioactive spider. You know, there could be some great conspiracy. No, they throw all this, all that out the window. This guy works for this giant corporation that the way that they entice their employees to stay is they get them hooked on this mind-altering drug called Rapture. Yeah, which you like, then have seriously to, pump him full of like, crap. Like, seriously, yeah. And they have to take this or else they start wigging out. Yeah, and, and of so course, only the company Only can the company it. can produce it. So you now have a junkie, you know, Peter Parker of 2099, who's extremely smart, goes into his uh, place of work and rigs the genetic material radiation machine to do whatever it does to get to rid of the rapture. And into he gets a spider turned into a fucking Come vampire. On. Like, that looks like a vampire stat. And how awesome is that? And he's Spider-Man. So you literally have, like, a drug addict Spider-Man fighting, you know, the cyberpunk hordes is 20 And he's got spikes on his fingers. And he's got spikes on his fingers. Yeah, because Spi it's... Spikes on his fingers, a big spider skull on his chest. I mean, not everybody can have chains and a cape, so... Or giant shoulder pads, or unfortunately. Giant shoulder pads, yeah. Doom and Punisher and Ra Ravage, they, 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 they all took care of the shoulder took pads. took care of the shoulder pads. Spidey didn't have to. <laughs> That's right. And the, and the sewer can as the... Or the trash can as the... Shield. Another oh my god. Good oldie here, not quite as old, from somewhere around 2004, 2005, 2006, something, something like, like that. that. I don't know, my sense of time is Before more Marcos wrong. Martin and Brian K. Vaughn were Marcos Martin, <laughs> Brian K. Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doctor Strange, The Oath. This is probably the grooviest Doctor Strange story that's been done since Steve Ditko. I'm not gonna count Spider-Man Fever because that was a Spider-Man story that we wanted to be Doctor really Strange. Doctor that, Strange. Yeah, no, no, I'm right there with you on that. This is beyond Ditko. Pretty much the only Sp Doctor Strange that you need. I yeah. Guess. Um, the season one graphic novel was, was real really good. good by Emma Rios, which we did Real get back good. in. Yeah. 
You got copies of that around. Yeah. You know you want it. You know you want more good Doctor Strange. There's Come only on. like three Doctor Strange, but yeah, I mean, it starts where I, Night Nurse. That's what needs to be said about this comic. Nobody talks about the Night Nurse anymore. There's the guy that sews the costumes for all the superheroes that they don't talk about anymore. And then there's the Night Nurse. That's because I'm pretty sure he's only in DC. No, he's a Marvel. He's a DC guy. He's man. a Marvel and guy. And the DC one, they have the Invincible one. Dude, there's a Marvel guy. I don't know. In Spider-Man? No, it's Reed Richards because it's just everything <laughs> is unstable. Unstable. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, all right, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll beg to differ on that one. Um, but, yeah, so Night Nurse is like... You know, if you're Aranya, who's a rather crappy superhero, yeah, and or you're Iron Fist, who's Iron still Fist. just a dude, even just, if he is a kung fu billionaire. That's right, you know, he pulls hamstrings while fighting ninjas. Yeah. You need some place to go at 3 a.m. that's open, and that's not going to, you know, take your mask off and sell your secrets of the post or something. Um, and that is, is Night Nurse. And um, Night Nurse, Doctor Strange relationship? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty steep. Bendis tried to keep it going, but, like... A lot of other things where Bendis thinks it's a really good idea it's and wants not. to do it his way, it didn't it's quite work. From the highly anticipated video game Last of Us by Naughty Dog Studios, we have Last of Us American Dreams, which is a prequel, I think, right? Uh, yes. Prequel comic I, I uh, by Faith Aaron Hicks, who has done um, My Faith in Frankie. Did she do My Faith in Frankie? No, she did... Uh, Friends with Boys, most recently. That's right. Um, but she's a really, she's got a really great Becky Cloonan kind of Brian Lee O'Malley style um, that works really well, and it's kind of like almost a Lord of the Flies thing with the kids taking over in the post-apocalyptic world. You got horses. You got horses. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first issue sold out really fast. We got reprints of that, and we got number two in with giant ads for the game. You know, so while you're waiting for the game to come out, Last of Us. We also got back in uh, Remind, Volume 1, did we not? That's right, that's right. Oh, did we forget the grab? Oh, uh, we didn't bring it out here. But we showed you it a couple weeks ago. It's awesome. There's a cat with a giant fist. It punches things. It's underwater mystery adventure. I mean, underwater shit is cool. With a cat. With a cat that's got a big fist like Hellboy. Yeah. Speaking of, did you hear they're going to do Little Hellboy? They're I doing... didn't see the Art Balthazar and Franco. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Yep, that's going to be awesome. Yep. And speaking of uh, younger versions of characters, this uh, Thor, God of Thunder... First hardcover right here. It's got young Thor, it's got current Thor, I guess, and it's got old King Thor. One-eyed, one-armed Lord of Asgard. Yeah, one with a destroyer arm. Hammer. That's right. But this has been, talk about, like, essential stories after Jack Kirby Thor. This is up there. I mean, this is, like, the Sod Ribic is turning in just amazing painted covers, and then inside he's just got this great, like, Silver Age... Cosmic action. Yeah, it's, it that, channels a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of Frank Frazetta influence totally, in there. Totally, totally. Totally, some Death Dealer stuff some going Death on. Dealer. The, the colors are also, they're, they're, they've got this really light look to them. Well, that, yeah. Like, well, having a painted quality to them, it's still, like, It works really well. It's, it's Ives Forcina, who it's I've never... Art! Yeah, no, I have never... comics? I mean, like, it, you, you think that they work together and they planned it or something. And you know what? After six issues, he's still on the book! Name me one other artist from Marvel that's still working on the same comic after six issues. Maybe that's why you guys aren't selling a lot of comics? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, you know, you keep one artist on the book, you sell a lot of comics, it's really good, it's a concise thing, and five years down the road, nobody knows that it was later. Yeah, and having sharks getting punched in half doesn't hurt at all, either. No. That's always good. No. Uh, I think that's it, and cover of the week. That's right, we're bringing it back. Yeah, why not? How sexy is that? That is awesome. That is like if I was 15, and I was reading comics, I would take this down to the Photoshop, and I would make a big poster, and I would put it behind my door, my door, so my mom didn't see it when she came in and busted <laughs> on me, you know. Um, but totally. I mean, it's just so cool. You got Mohawk Punk Storm. In her nice kind of like... In her Chris Anka design. Yeah, got Chris Anka. Both the Chris Anka designs yeah. going on there with Storm and Psylocke. Yeah. Got Chris Bacalo's Rachel Gray design. Yeah. It's badass. It's hip. It's edgy. It's 90s. It's cool. <laughs> well, not nearly as hip, edgy, and 90s as 2099. It's 2099, but you know what, man? That's the future. Yeah. You can't be as it's hip It's 90s as the in two ways. It's from the 1990s, <laughs> but it's about the 2090s. Holy crap! <laughs> we'll oh. leave you with good wishes from 2099, and we hope your day is as futuristic and shiny as ours is. See ya.